Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nuclear Reactor Kinetics and Dynamics Lectures. We are now about to enter a brave new world. We have survived the reactor kinetics portion of the course, and from now on the course will focus on modeling reactor behavior with dynamic feedback. Understanding a system's dynamic behavior is a matter of understanding how different feedback components and control elements interact, and these elements are represented by block diagrams. Block diagrams work by receiving an input signal, E for example, and operating on it using some function, G1 for example, which is sometimes also represented using G1 of D or G1 of S, depending on which coordinate system we choose to use. G1 operates on our input signal, E, and produces the output signal, C, which is noted simply by G1 times E. If we had a second control element, G2, that also operated on our signal, and the output signal would be G2 times G1 times E. In practice, these control elements might multiply a signal by some constant amplitude, they might take the derivative of the input signal, or they could even integrate the input signal. In the final kinetics lecture, we assume that the change in reactivity during a prompt supercritical transient was dictated by the integral of the power, or the amount of energy released during the transient. In this case, the power integral is a feedback control element that shows how our input signal, the power, introduces a change in an output signal, the reactivity. There are all sorts of control elements that can modify a signal. A comparator, for example, is a device that adds or subtracts two signals. Here, the output E is equal to R, which flows through the positive sign of the comparator, minus C, which flows through the negative sign. Now, the systems that we've looked at so far are all examples of open-loop systems. For an open-loop system, an input signal flows through a control element, is modified, and its output has no impact on the signal's initial input. A kinetics model of a reactor with no feedback is an example of an open-loop system. Given some sort of reactivity insertion, the reactor's power can increase to any arbitrary magnitude, but in reality this behavior is, of course, not realistic. Just like two rabbits left alone on a desert island to create lots of little baby bunnies, eventually some element, be it food limitations, the appearance of predators, or some nefarious lucky rabbit's foot industry, will appear to limit the growth of an output based on its current output. The same exact thing happens with nuclear reactors. This block diagram models the behavior of a system with feedback. We have an input signal, R, that runs through a comparator to become E, and then control element G1 to become C. With block diagrams, a signal only changes when it runs through some sort of control element. A signal remains identical along any position along our blue lines. So the signal that moves into our comparator here is the exact same signal, C, as the C that comes out of G1. From here we can solve for the output signal, C, as a function of the input signal by crafting a series of simultaneous equations. We know that C is equal to G1E, and that E is equal to R minus C. From here we can substitute in the equation for E into the first equation, and then solve for C. And then we see that C is equal to G1 divided by 1 plus G1 times R. Now let's modify our system a little more to make it characteristic of a typical system with feedback. In this case we have a feed forward element, G1, which acts on the input signal, and a feedback element, H1, which acts on the output of the signal before combining it back with the initial input. G1 might, for example, represent the prompt multiplication of delayed neutrons in the reactor, so the point kinetics equations, while H1 might represent that power integral from before that modified our system's initial reactivity insertion. We can go about solving for the system's output, C, by noting that C is equal to G1E, B is equal to H1C, and E is equal to R minus B, which is also equal to R minus H1C. From here we substitute the equation for E into the equation for C, rearrange some terms, and we find that C is equal to R times G1 divided by 1 plus G1 H1. We'll encounter this equation very, very often in some form or another, as it serves as the primary equation for predicting the behavior of a system with dynamic feedback. We can draw an even more general version of this standard equation 
using this almost universal model of a system's dynamic behavior. In this general form, a command signal or input V is acted on by a reference input element A, and then passed into a comparator where it is combined with the signal B, which has been passed through a feedback element H1. After going through the comparator, the signal is acted on by a control element, G1, before it goes into another comparator that incorporates the function B operating on some input disturbance signal, U. After incorporating the disturbance signal, element G2 acts on our final signal and produces our output signal, C. If we go through all the math, we'll see that C is equal to G2, G1, A, V, plus G2, B, U, all divided by 1 plus G2, G1, H1. So what do we do when our control system looks different from the standard form? Simple, we convert it back to the standard form. As a rule, we can draw a box around any part of our block diagram and replace it with our own custom-made element, here, gx. We can do this as many times as we want, and in practice, we'll do it as many times as necessary until our block diagram looks like something that we recognize. From there, we can solve for the output signal as a function of the input signal and replace our custom-defined control elements with what their components actually represent and then simplify. Here's another example where our signal is split into parallel components. This complicates our math slightly, but we just need to define a surrogate feedback element, hx, and simplify our model until it looks like some form that we know how to solve. The text Automatic Control Theory by Raven includes some handy diagrams for these control element simplifications, and you can use these control element identities to make your block diagram simplification process easier. The full text of Automatic Control Theory by Raven is available on the internet, and you can Google this PDF. That's it for block diagrams, and in the following lectures, we'll begin defining what these control elements exactly represent, and how we can use them to solve for a system's true dynamic behavior in the time, frequency, and S domains.